Three shocking things that Jesus said according to Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Hi there, and welcome to Insightology. Today we'll reveal to you three things that Jesus said according to Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Matthew, Mark, and Luke that many may find to be shocking. But before we start, hey Google, what language did Jesus speak? Aramaic. Here's a summary from Washington Post. There's scholarly consensus that the historical Jesus principally spoke Aramaic, the ancient Semitic language. Great. Keep that in mind and let's begin. In the Gospel according to Mark chapter 12 verse 29, And Jesus answered him, Hold up, let's hear it in the original language, Aramaic. And Jesus answered him. Play that again. Amar leish madmemin kulhun pakten. Shma Israel. Maria Allah. Maria Hadu. Maria Allah. And Jesus answered him. The first of all the commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord Allah, the Lord is one. In the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 19, verse 17, Jesus says, Mana Quran Talitab, Lait Taba illa in Had, Allah. Why do you call me good? There's none good except the one, Allah. Mana Quran Talitab, Lait Taba illa in Had, Allah. Why do you call me good? There's none good except the one, Allah. The one, Allah. The one, Allah. Though this may be surprising to many, in fact, in 2004, a movie about Jesus titled The Passion of Christ was released. It's the highest grossing Christian film of all time. In this movie, Jesus speaks Aramaic. Let's listen to two clips from the movie. The Hoda Kasta. The Allah. The Hoda Kasta. The Allah. The Allah. The Allah. The Allah. This same word, ila, is a very common word, frequently used by Muslims and extensively used within their sacred scripture. Ilahi, Anas, God of mankind. Wama min ilahin illa ilahun wahidun. There is no God except one God. Wama umiru illa liabudu ilahan wahidan la ilaha illahu. And they were only commanded to worship one God. There is no God except He. Hmm. And to think of it, all this time. While scholars and historians generally agree that Jesus spoke Aramaic, there is a little bit of a discussion as to what language he spoke, to the extent that in 2014 the leader of Israel, Benjamin Netanyahu, and Pope Francis went back and forth on whether he spoke Hebrew or Aramaic.
According to majority historians, she was most likely multilingual. In Luke, Jesus is shown reading Hebrew, chapter 4, verse 16, for example. So let's look at another statement from Jesus, this time from the Gospel according to Luke, in Hebrew. Jesus says, The disciple is not above the teacher, but everyone that is Muslim will be like the teacher. Now, this word Muslim sounds like Muslim. 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 Muslim, 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 Muslim. And it is, in fact, the same word. One is Hebrew and one is Arabic, and they're both Semitic languages from the same region. To illustrate this, we can go to the Hans Word Dictionary. The word Muslim has been commonly translated as perfect in the Bible. We have Salama, blameless, flawless. Then we have Salim, sound, intact, complete, perfect. perfect. There's Musallam, unblemished, flawless. And right, right there, right under Musallam, is Muslim. Muslim. We also have the famous biblical commentator from the late 18th century, Charles Ellicott, who states in his commentary of Isaiah 42, 19, 19, as he that is perfect, strictly speaking, the devoted or surrendered one. The Hebrew Muslim is interesting as connected to the modern Muslim and Islam, the resigned to the will of God. The frequent use of this or a cognate form as a proper name after the exile may be connected with it by some link of causation. Other meanings given to it have been perfect, as in the authorized version. Now, this may or may not be a big deal to you, but given the amount of Islamophobia that exists in the world today, there is a good chance that this may shock or even anger some of the viewers out there. So, we thought it might be a good idea to show a common ground between the three Abrahamic faiths. As a result, before any one of you begin a war in the comment section, here's something to keep in mind. Jesus often extended the greeting, Peace be upon you. As you may know, Muslims greet each other with the same phrase in Arabic, Assalamu alaikum. Jews also use the same greeting, but they say it in Hebrew, Shalom alaikum. Notice the similarities in both Arabic and Hebrew. Also, the common respected response to this greeting in both faith is, and on you be peace. In Arabic, wa alaikum assalam. In Hebrew, alaikum shalom. And as they were still talking about this, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them and said unto them, Peace be unto you. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I'm sending you. A week later, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And into whatsoever house you enter, first say, Peace be to this house. This is the same manner of greeting or entering someone's house for Muslims, as stated in their scripture. When you enter houses, give greetings of peace upon each other, a greeting from God, blessed and good. Thus does God make clear to you 
the signs that you may understand. Though the common ground between the three faiths are undeniable, many of these basic facts remain unknown to the majority at this time. This has been a look at this has been a look at linguistics. Linguistics. Aramaic and Hebrew in the Bible.